this publication which features interviews, artworks and archives of 28 contemporary artists who live and work in Manila is a project by Valerie Kevestani and is edited by Eva McGavin Basa, who I'm delighted is here today. Eva, as many of you know, is a writer, a curator, an editor who has worked in Singapore, Malaysia, the UK, and was, is now based in the Philippines, where she most recently ran uh, Manila Contemporary, which specialized in Filipino contemporary work. She will be speaking to us about the book, the process behind it, uh, and also some of the artists it features. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Eva McGovern Basa. So thank you all for coming. Um, it's really nice to be here in KL on home turf um, to present and share this book project um, that took about two and a half years to, to produce. Um, as Rahel said, um, I'm an independent curator and writer um, and books have become increasingly important um, to me. To, um, to produce and I'm, I'm really thrilled and want to say thank you to Ilham and to Rahel and Valentine Willey who's not here today and, and the whole team at Ilham for hosting, hosting me. Um, and um, what I'm gonna do today as Rahel said is just take you through the book and then we'll have some um, questions a little bit a little bit later on, and I hope that um, you know if, if there's anything that you want to to discuss, then then please do. Um, so, as Rahel mentioned, this is an interview um, interview format coffee table book. Um, it's about 210 pages, um, and is very much about artists and their relationship to Metro Manila. Um, the book began. As, um, as an idea um, and as something that Valeria Cavastani, who is a Spanish-Filipino artist and patron of the arts, wanted to do for a very long time. Um, when I was at Manila Contemporary, um, Valeria was one of the partners in the gallery and when the gallery closed, she approached me um, with this passion project um, of wanting to do a book that promoted contemporary Filipino art. Um, and so in 2014, um, we got together and started discussing what a book, um, what, what that book might look like. Um, and we arrived at the interview format because we felt that it was really important for artists to be able to articulate their own practice, um, and to be able to represent themselves in, in, uh, in a text format. Um, so this book is really about artists um, and, and art um, and the, the city. So that was very clear that um, we would make it about people. Um, but what was also important um, was this idea of the city. And I don't know, has anyone been to Manila before? Here? And did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so um, basically, I mean, Manila is, um, it's, it's a large uh, metropolitan city um, and the way people describe it is um, that it is super, super chaotic um, and intense and challenging. Um, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to take this idea of chaos um, and use it as a starting point. Um, so the title is very much um, reflecting that spirit, that through chaos, through difficult circumstances, interesting things can emerge, um, that creativity and innovation can um, somehow use this energy to do um, weird and wonderful, wonderful things. 
Um, so this was, you know, this was the starting point um, for the book. So it was really important to visually do this through documentation of the city. Um, and we wanted to uh, work with an artist um, and photographer who had this obsessive um, desire to, uh, in, in their practice for the city itself. So we worked with MMU, who is one of the photographers and participating artists in the book, um, who has been obsessively documenting the city for a long period of time. And so in the inside front cover of the book, of which this slide um, depicts, we have selected a series of images of locations around Metro Manila. Um, so the front, which is no chaos, has images that are um, showing um, ideas of density and, and um, kind of chaoticness and, and development um, and history. And then the images in the back, which is um, no party, is about sort of being fun and these kind of curious things that you discover when you go into the, into the heart of the city. Um, but what was also really important was to think about how the book experience um, could somehow allow viewers um, a, greater, um, a greater sense of what the city was like. So we really wanted to play around and see what we could do um, to make the book experience something um, that could kind of uh, give you that sense of the city. Um, so one way, and one, uh, which was super important to Valeria, which, because she had always stressed the need for impact, visual impact, was pop-ups. So we have um, a pop-up in the front, which is the title, um, the first half of the title, and then a pop-up in the back, which is the second half. So the idea is that it's this sort of architectural structure that somehow emerges out of, out of the city to kind of give you that sense of buildings and weight um, through these beautiful images that MM um, has has taken. Um, and so the designers that we worked with were really crucial to that as well. And i um, very happy to say that the design scene in Metro Manila is thriving. Um, there is a huge amount of young creative designers and mid-career creative designers and senior designers um, that are working in the city. So we were really, really spoilt for choice. Um, and we eventually arrived um, at a collaboration with Ink Surge, which is a design duo by Rex Advincula and Joyce Tai. Um, so they're, they're interested in kind of urban aesthetics. And they were really willing to take this you know, great sort of journey with us and, and go on this crazy adventure of how to design pop-ups in, in a book. Um, but really, as I said to you before, the, the starting point of this project was and is um, Metro Manila. Um, so these again are some aerial or uh, high vantage point images of the city, uh, various parts of the city. And um, so you get a sense of just how much sort of development has been going on in terms of the skyscrapers in Makati and um, uh, Bonifacio Global City and Ortigas as well as the um, smaller houses in high density um, in areas like Manila. Um, so it is this really intense um, place. Um, and it's filled with so much um, energy and contradiction and um, earthquakes and typhoons and uh, corruption and history and creativity and innovation um, and adaptability and so many sort of wonderful things that try to counterbalance all of the challenging things that people that people experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so this is how we introduced um, viewers, readers rather, to the city itself. Um, so I don't know if you're aware, but Metro Manila is actually made up of 16 cities and a municipality. Um, it's about 12 million in population. Um, it's a Catholic city, part of the Catholic Philippines, which is one of the largest Catholic countries outside of Europe. Um, it is separated into north and south by um, the Pasig River. And Manila is actually a small city where the seat of the government is by Manila Bay. Um, so when people, so we've used Manila and Metro Manila sort of interchangeably um, throughout, throughout the book. 
Um, and then we've just put, included some stats about um, the traffic and, and types of public transport, which are, range from jeepneys to taxis, buses, um, and a huge volume of cars, which contribute to about 80% of the, the, um, the incredible traffic that we have to experience every day um, in the city, which is something that people are obsessively talking about. And I hear more and more of that in KL as well, and people are telling me how bad KL traffic is getting. Um, but it is still so nice in comparison to Metro Manila. Um, so we chose, um, and I was telling Wang Choi, who will be moderating later on, we chose 28 artists um, who range from age and generation to early 20s, um, right up to mid-60s, um, from dis different disciplines, um, from painting, sculpture, installation, performance, uh, photography. Um, and if, if these artists had um, an alternative or artist-run space um, that they had founded, then we included that um, in the book itself. So it was important to have that, um, that kind of community contribution documented in the project. Um, so people get a small sense that there are these artist-run run spaces in the city. Um, so I think artists that have shown here in the Philippines might be Carla Gabuco, um, Maria Jonas Zoleta, Cristina Kisambing Remilio, MMU, Maya Munoz, I know is shown in KL, Wawi Navarroza, um, Iggy Rodriguez, uh, Caloy Sanchez, Nor Norberto Roldan. Um, so quite a few have, have been showing here um, in, in KL, um, which is... Um, which is nice. I mean, there are, uh, the Philippines and the Philippine art scene is one of the most vibrant in the region at the moment. There are a lot of artists coming out of universities, a lot of galleries opening, a lot of interest in the Philippines from the region. I see um, a lot more people from KL coming to the art fair um, and coming to shows, um, as well as other people from, from Singapore and uh, Southeast Asia. So. Um, it is this very, very vibrant place um, in terms of art and creativity. So these are, um, these are portraits of the artists. And basically the process was um, for the book was that Valeria and I and our project manager, we did some research and we had a selection process where we would... Um, where we would discuss the different types of artists that we wanted to have in the book. And for me, we want, I wanted diversity, I wanted different ages, generations, different medium, um, and artists that were really you know, connected and inspired by the city. And Valeria also wanted, um, wanted the same, and wanted artists who have this incredible energy. Um, so after we arrived at 28, um, which took maybe three months of um, research, we interviewed all of them. Um, so we went to their, their studios um, and we sat down with them face to face and interviewed them and recorded the interviews. Um, some interviews were conducted in Tagalog because obviously some artists are more comfortable speaking in their mother tongue than in English and others were conducted by me in English and um, these were then uh, I think they, they lasted maybe two to three hours each interview, and then if we needed a follow-up interview, we would do one. Um, and these interviews were then transcribed um, into text, and then if they needed to be translated, they were. Um, and the raw texts that were given to us were about 12,000 to 15,000 words long. So each text was edited down to about 1,500 to 2,000 words each. Um, and then if we needed to do any follow-up interviews, we, we would. Um, and we also photographed each artist, as you can see from these fabulous, fabulous portraits of all of them. Um, and MMU also went to their studios, and she's been documenting the art scene as well as the city for a long period of time. So she had this really great rapport with all of the artists. Um, and documented them, documented some of their works, and the artists also submitted artwork that we had requested from them. Um, and what we wanted to do as well was to include personal 
personal elements um, from their life and their work. So sketches, handwritten notes, um, old photographs, uh, books that were important to them to give this human, human element. Um, I mean, art books can be a little bit dry sometimes and I think that what we wanted to do was have something where you could just sort of dip in and and read about these artists and it would take you five minutes and you would just get a sense of who they were what kind of art they did um, who their influences were and you know their thoughts and hopes and dreams and sort of funny stories about um, being an artist in in Metro Metro Manila um, and then what we did, well, which also was why the book took so long to do, was that every artist was allowed, um, and we insisted that every artist approve their designs. So that went going back to the studio, um, speaking with them, asking them how they felt about what, um, what we did, because the designers really tried to respond to each artist individually. So the book is purposefully, visually eclectic and energetic and colorful um, to, reflect, to reflect them, basically. Um, and so Maria Giona Zaletta, she's in her mid-twenties, and she, um, she insisted that she wanted to redesign her page. <laughs> so this um, title page is actually uh, something that came from her. And um, Although that slowed things down a little bit, it was important to allow her the agency to make these decisions on how she wanted to be represented. And the language that she uses in the interview was also rewritten to reflect the stylized nuance, um, I don't know how to describe it, but um, way of like, how you speak when you're text messaging someone or millennials speak. I don't know how, how to describe it. Um, so we had to rewrite the whole thing. And, um, but at the same time, I thought it was important that if that's how she wanted to be represented, then she should be allowed to be represented in that way. Um, so, so, that, so the book is really a collaborative process. I mean, as a curator, that's something that's really important to me is to have this ongoing conversation with artists to deepen your understanding about who they are and, and their practice, basically. Um, we, also chose art we also chose one foreigner um, called David Griggs, who's an Australian who adopted Metro Manila as his second home and is very much engaged in sort of urban subculture like skateboarding and uh, music. And this insider-outsider perspective was um, interesting to um, include in, in the book. And David is also part of, a, part of the Bastards of Misrepresentation, which is a loose collective of artists in Metro Manila, spearheaded by Manuel Ocampo. Um, so he, David talks about that, that experience um, as, a, as an Australian and being included in something that, that he says, quite rightly, is a very important movement um, or loose movement in, in the Metro Manila art scene. But other stories that come up, because it's very much about storytelling, other stories that came up were how artists like Lena Kubangbang um, were, had this very um, important and meaningful relationship with her um, professor at the University of the Philippines, Roberto Chabet, who passed away about five years ago. And he was a, a really... Um, important force in um, UP and educated generations of artists. And so that, um, that experience was also something that we tried to bring out in the book. Um, so there's another curator, Bobby Valenzuela, um, who some would say would be in the opposing camp to Roberto Chabet, is also someone that, that is mentioned by artists. So we wanted to include those, you know, those alternative or oral art histories um, for people to, to, um, to understand, I suppose, from a very personal point of view. Um, and then Christina Kisambing Romilo um, is another artist who works with found materials. Um, and most of these materials have been recovered from the renovation of her family home in Quezon City. Um, and so we wanted to use this beautiful image of her studio and home to give people that experience of a studio visit. 
So I've been trying to get collectors and and art enthusiasts to go to her house. But if you're in Makati and you want to go to QC, um, it's quite far on a Saturday. <laughs> Most people don't want to go. So um, at least through, through this um, the inclusion of what her house looks like, people can get a sense of these, the, the treasure troves you know, and the environments that artists work in, um, which has always been something that I've really enjoyed and has been such a privilege to be able to do. Um, talking to artists has been the, the sort of greatest and most fulfilling thing um, in my practice. Uh, so that's why we wanted to, um, to sort of have this, this moment where it feels like you're talking to them. Um, so this is Manuel Ocampo. And he was one of the artists, one of the two artists that just opened the Venice, uh, the Philippine Pavilion at the Venice Biennale. Um, he is an artist that has had significant international success outside of the Philippines and then returned about a decade ago and is um, this important sort of additional mentor to young artists. And so we tried to allow, or we, we encouraged him to talk about the bastards of misrepresentation and the good and bad sort of opinions that he has of Metro Manila, as well as his very sophisticated um, position as a painter. Um, so Manuel talks about, talks about that, and he also talks about Romeo Lee, who was on the cover, who's on the cover of the book, um, and how Romeo Lee is a senior artist, um, a punk rocker, also a mentor to young artists, um, legitimized a, a sort of spirit of liberation from the market um, and allowed Manuel to come in and sort of do playful and humorous kind of practical jokes and pranks on the art world. Um, and so it's nice to sort of hear these artists talk about each other as well. Um, so once again, we've included, as I said, performance artists, and this is Isa Hoxon, who is a female artist that has perfected the art of male macho dancing um, in relation to sort of gender politics. And uh, she has this really fascinating practice that also stems from a very firm um, background in dance and was a ballet dancer. Um, and then this is Mark Salvatus, um, who also has a, whose work is about urbanism and making work about the city through conceptual installation, performative and video works. Um, but he actually started as a street artist um, and had a, 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 sticker, a sticker practice and set up the um, Filipina Street Plan, which was a graffiti collective. Um, so we, you know, we're also including um, um, aspects of sort of urban art, street art, graffiti um, in the book. And Mark has a, a small space with a group of other artists called 98B. And I'll show you a quick video about them a little later. Um, so this is how we, um, how we depicted um, these artist-run spaces. The, I don't know if you can see it, but we included like the, the coordinates of the space, the address, the website, images from you know, projects that they've done, and just a short history. Because it's quite hard to find in one book um, information about various different things that are, that are going on. Um, and so we also, following on from, from these artist-run spaces, included, of course, P.B. Roldan. P.B. is his nickname. Um, who is a senior artist in his um, 60s, and he also runs one of the longest-running artist-run spaces in, in um, Quezon City called Green Papaya Art Projects. Um, and he was um, also involved um, in various sort of political activities in the island of Negros. Um, so we talk, about, we talk about that history and then his moving to Metro Manila and then also how he founded Green, Green Papaya, um, which is a very important space for experimentation, um, for young artists to go and incubate ideas, um, to play, to, to come together and um, do different types of um, activities, including sound and video and movement and poetry. Um, so we included about four spaces in the book. Um, but what we also did is we did this really fun sort of yearbook collage of all of the artists um, 
from the 90s because there was actually quite a, a strong movement of alternative spaces in Metro Manila in the 90s. So Ringo um, Bunawan, who is an artist and archivist, um, contributed this photo essay of all of the artists when they were much younger and um, doing sort of wonderful, crazy things. Um, and so we, we created this, it's a pullout that you can, um, that you can unfold in the book along with a letter that Ringo has written um, to an anonymous person, but it's actually, um, it's actually Chibet that she's writing to because Ringo was one of his most beloved pupils. Um, and that sense of longing for this particular moment in time when the market was a little less um, bullish um, kind of comes across in this, in this letter. So again, it's a very human, um, very accessible way of presenting information, timelines, and, and histories. Um, but I suppose a book about Metro Manila wouldn't be complete without some type of map. So we produced um, a, a sort of a loose map of galleries, um, alternative spaces, museums and government institutions, um, uh, listings of some of the art prizes in Manila. There's been art prizes that have been around for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, along with universities and colleges. So people get a sense of, um, you know, this incredible activity that's going on um, in Metro Manila. So we used infographics to get, give you a sense of where these activities are happening and the volume at which they're, they're happening in. So again, this is another insert that you can pull out and take away with you. And there's the QR, code, the QR codes as well that you can scan and, and get information, further information on, on these on these um, spaces. Um, so I'm just going to wrap up with um, some of the quotes from the book. Um, and many of these artists I've worked with um, over, a long, over many years. Um, so, and that was in some ways um, important so that we could have these um, you know, open conversations. Um, to talk about on an, on, in an honest and sort of um, respectful platform, you know, how they feel about many different things. Um, so Wawi Navarosa is a photographer. Um, she also does um, some installation. And she, um, she discusses, you know, this idea of, of the city um, and mentions um, that there's, there's so much to say, but nothing is more prominent than the horrible traffic. Um, it just makes everywhere like a different planet away. We do so many forward steps on an individual level, but the standstill and time lost is such a wet blanket. The city is a metro polycog and not friendly to commuters or pedestrians. There's no bike lane, there are no bike lanes, no queues, no sidewalks, too many cars, buses from hell, flying MRT trains, and it's a sci-fi sci dystopia telenovela. That's quite true, actually. Um, but of course, there's always some optimism. And she says, but that's what makes Manila, Manila. The grit, the living and the dead, the wet edges. And somehow, we make it work. And I think that's very true. Um, and so this is Mark Salvatus. Um, and he talks about his work and how there are rules, but you can make your own rules. And I think that's you know what uh, a good and a bad thing. Um, in terms of how people kind of exist. But at the same time, as an artist, that's what you need to do. You need to, you need to function in between these spaces and figure out how to, how to observe and reflect and disrupt and disturb um, and innovate and celebrate all these um, sort of social issues and, and, um, and uh, you know, the, the realities of living in your context. Um, and this is Caloy Sanchez, and he makes these really beautiful paintings of um, people from around his neighborhood in Malabon. And um, it, it's all about sort of secrets and intimate, you know, intimate occurrences in private spaces. Um, and Malabon is, is a very old part of, of Metro Manila. Um, and it's very, it's very narrow streets, and um, it, it's also like low housing, but it's very dense. 
Um, and he says it really nicely, um, that it's like two steps away from chaos. Um, you're living in both worlds at the same time. Uh, sometimes I hear fighting and yelling. A wife just found out that her husband has been, you know. But it's quite nice, actually, all the drama of Manila. There are so many stories here. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to do in this book, is to present all these different stories, stories about art, about people, about the city, um, and make a contribution in terms of a record about the scene. Um, and hopefully we can do, do more books. Um, but uh, do take a look um, at the book, which is in the reception, reception area. Um, this is the back cover, as I, as I said earlier on in the presentation, um, which is also a, a pop-up. Um, and I'm just going to end with um, showing you just a very short video about 98B, which is Mark Salvatis' artist-run um, collective. Um, and the types of things that they do in Escolta in Manila, which is, um, as I said, where the seat of the government is and the very old part of the, of the city. Um, so thank you for listening to me, and I hope you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about the scene, and Wang Choi and I will, will talk a bit more. Um, but let me just play the video to, to um, jerk you out of the stupor of listening to me speak for 20 minutes, so... Uh, but I might need some help to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I got it. How do I get it to the end? There we go. Oh no. Wait, how do I start it from the beginning? Sorry, you're, look, you're watching it backwards. Here we go. So obviously there's lots more spaces than just 98B, but um, that just gives you a sense of this sort of ground up DIY energy that's happening all over the city. Um, so thank you very much. And um, I guess we'll go into a short, short discussion and please, please ask um, any questions that you might like. Thank you, thank you.
Hi, thank you very much, Eva. We're just going to move into the Q&A, and um, we have Li Weng Choi, who's going to moderate the session. Uh, Weng is a writer and an art critic who has worked with various institutions like National Gallery of Singapore and CCA Singapore. He's written extensively uh, about art in Southeast Asia, and um, over to you. Uh, thank you, Harahel, and of course, uh, thank you, Eva. It's good to see you. It's been a while since uh, uh, we've had a chance to uh, catch up and talk. Uh, if I may start with a, a sort of abusing my privilege and asking some questions first, and then I'll hand over to you. I thought um, the first question that I would like to ask uh, has to do with, with process of making the book. Um, and just to sort of um, reiterate some of the things that you said, uh, that the book would be very uh, focused on thinking about Metro Manila as an experience and arts and culture within that sort of framework. But what was also very nice to hear was that you were very interested in making the book itself an experience as a way of becoming this kind of parallel. So um, the, the subject matter of the book and the, uh, the way the book feels as a book you know, are, are connected. And the other thing that you also said that uh, struck me was the importance of having interviews uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because you uh, privilege the voices of the artists, but also because you privilege storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, but interviews are, and, and finally I'm getting to my question, interviewing is not so easy. It's very easy, it seems very straightforward to have a conversation, but then to really sort of move it to shift it, to focus it on the idea of, on the one hand, you're representing a voice, but you're also trying to have this artist, this person tell stories about the city, so also representing city life. So perhaps you can talk a little bit more about how, uh, as you're working on the book, you were thinking about this process of interviewing, how you, as you said, you would go back to it if you had to fill up some things, but it, would, it becomes a way of setting a tone. Even though there's so many different voices, there's a certain kind of consistency, I suppose, that when you're putting the, the book together. So if you could talk about that, the, the, whole, the whole issue of the interview process. Um, yeah, so, so how we approached the interview process was that we actually came up with a list of maybe 20 to 30 questions that we thought we should use as anchoring devices for interviews. Um, so these were centered around them as people and their sort of history of becoming, to becoming an artist, their practice, their ideas around Metro Manila as a city, and also the uh, scene in the art scene in the Philippines. Um, so because I had worked with a lot of these artists before and knew their practices in, in, to a certain amount of depth, I was also able to make sure that an artist like um, Jerry Tan, who's been, who has been teaching at UP, for example, talks about um, art education in the Philippines. So, so we did approach each artist individually at the same time and created um, questions that were unique to them that would bring out stories from their past and then very open to the organic conversation as well, which was... Um, which you know makes interviews kind of interesting because you discover things that you didn't. I mean, obviously, you don't know everything about these people that you're talking to. So, um, when things kind of came up and seemed interesting, then we would pursue those lines of lines of inquiry. Um, but the raw texts were very much these sort of long, sort of sprawling conversations that would descend into you know, many topics that were not relevant or um, were too complicated um, to, to include. So I think that was another challenge was how do we, in a book that's supposed to be human and accessible, not include footnotes and, you know, <laughs> not, not include kind of descriptions of academic terms. And, you know, we didn't want to be bogged down by that terminology. We, we wanted to to just have it a free-flowing conversation. So where necessary, I would insert you know, one descriptive sentence to loosely um, explain or contextualize so or use someone's full name rather than their first name, for example. Um, 
So it was a mixture of this kind of organic conversation as well as these um, quite strategic list of questions. Um, and then certain artists wanted to talk about certain things. So again, we would allow that, if it was important to them, we would allow them to, to focus on that in their, in their interview. And some really did want to finely edit and um, amend and control um, in a much tighter way you know, their design and, and, and their text. What would be the um, average length of uh, some of the interviews in the book then? Um, maybe 15, the, the final texts are about 1,500 words. Mm -hmm. um, and certain artists, I mean, which again, we, we didn't force, certain artists don't really like to talk that much. Um, so if, you know, if they, if they sort of felt that the interview was, you know, coming to a natural conclusion and they, they didn't have a lot more to say, then instead of forcing the issue, we would just have, you know, we would just have a shorter, a shorter interview. I mean, some artists, you know, like their work to speak for them um, rather than, you know, be particularly verbose about describing their work. Um, if I may um, ask one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, talking about interviewing and talking about the process of making the book, but the book is also um, rightly or wrongly seen as a certain kind of representation of, uh, of the art scene in Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about uh, certain kind of choices uh, and strategies of trying to, to represent. So for instance, the inclusion of the artists, you know, the idea of uh, diversity, uh, having um, the intergenerational, uh, the different kinds of approaches, uh, the, uh, with David Griggs, the kind of insider outsider. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, you're, you're all um, in Ilham right now uh, and the Contemporary Forum, and uh, this is also a project about sort of representing, even though it tries to represent in a particular kind of way by not saying this is an academic authoritative survey uh, that tells a, a single kind of, or a narrative that includes a lot of things but has a particular kind of argument. So in that way, the, the project of the book as a way of trying to represent uh, is similar to you know a number of different initiatives of a way of saying I want to present uh, a set of multiple stories, but I don't necessarily want to um, have a a strong framework so that allow them their 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 space. So if you could talk about that kind of challenge of trying to represent with you know only or a lot you know 28 is on the one hand a big number, but it's also only a fraction. Yeah. And just now when you uh, showed the video of 98B, um, to sort of say that this is sort of a good e example of on-the-ground uh, on energy. So it's, it's, it's a real struggle of thinking about how to represent that isn't, on the one hand, there's a lot of expertise and, and uh, knowledge, but it's also not trying to be definitive. So yeah. perhaps you can talk about some of those challenges. Yeah. Um, so when we were approaching this project initially, um, you know, I was very aware that, A, I'm not Filipino um, and did not grow up in Metro Manila um, and that, you know, our editor-in-chief was Spanish Filipino and came from a certain, you know, a certain set of experiences. Um, and so we um, were very... We thought it was very important, A, that you know, artists speak for themselves and that if they want to speak in, their, in Tagalog, then they can, and you know, that we were not going to impose a sort of a language issue during the interview process. But also, that's why we titled the book 28 Artists in Metro Manila, as opposed to Contemporary Philippine Art Now, or you know, um, whatever other kind of generic sort of descriptive title that umbrellas you know, this book as the, the authoritative, definitive sort of survey of um, what's happening in the Philippines. I mean, you're absolutely right. We could have had so many more artists um, and it could have been, you know, a project that went on for a much longer period, period of time. Um, but we, we approached it through the interview format to allow them to speak for themselves. Um, we, in the introduction, you know, very clearly said that we're not trying to define, but we're trying to um, contribute a conversation about the scene, um, that it is by no means a full stop, but um, uh, contributing many question marks, um, rather than 
defining um, who these artists were. I mean, some of the interviews kind of just abruptly end as well, which is also a, a specific device to just say that this is a, you know, an ongoing type of conversation. Of course, everyone has an opinion about these types of things, and, you know, there are many books, well, there are more books coming out about sort of Philippines and Philippine art at the moment, but I didn't want to have a single voice, single authored book. It was supposed to be multivocal. Um, and of course, we're frameworking, we're editing, you know, we are the ones presenting the conversation. So of course, you know, my particular um, approach or style or strategy along with Valeria um, comes across in, in this project. Um, and I don't really have a huge, you know, I mean, I'm very happy with what we've been able, able to do, but I think I'm, I'm kind of okay with all the problems about it as well. I think that these things, you know, should be sort of thought through a little bit more and, and discussed openly. Um, so I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with what we've been able to, to achieve. Um, but obviously, yeah, I mean, the, the sort of narrative building, um, you know, sort of decision is always a bit of a tricky one to, to take on. So, you know, come, come what may, I suppose. But hopefully it will just lead to more, more books, I suppose. So with that, um, could I open to sort of questions or comments from the audience? And we have a microphone there. Uh, so there, and then yourself. Uh, um. Hi. <laughs> Um, uh, it, uh, it's very interesting to see um, this type of book coming out of the Philippines. I don't know much about um, um, uh, the artists in the Philippines. I know some, but the, because there's so many talented ones, uh, for sure. Um, so what actually made you uh, go to these particular artists? Um, uh, I know that there was a bit of a conversation about the type of practice, intergenerational, etc. But um, is it more because you knew them better than other artists? Uh, because I know it's kind of hard. And also, what was the response um, to choosing these artists from, you know, the, the rest of the um, artists, other art, the art community? Because it can be quite sensitive, uh, and they probably <laughs> would <laughs> question you, like, what's your criteria, etc. And I'm sure that happened a lot. So it would be quite interesting to see, uh, I mean, what's, what, what was yeah. your experience and yeah. how did you go about you know, choosing the yeah. artists? I mean, I mean, to be honest, it was quite a nerve-wracking experience doing something like this because it's sort of who's in and who's out type of thing and it becomes personal and you're absolutely right. Um, so, you know, people were questioning why didn't we include um, certain artists, um, so because many of these artists are, um, what's the word, function outside of the, the commercial market, for example, um, and, and, and don't have commercial practices, and people were excited to, you know, or hoping that the book would include more familiar names that you see in, in galleries and, and auctions. Um, and we wanted, we chose artists because their work reflected um, energies of Metro Manila, because they had certain attitudes and alternative, you know, they had their own sort of community projects um, that we felt represented this kind of chaotic um, identity of, of the city. Um, so we had this research project, uh, this research process, and Valeria had artists that she wanted to include, I had artists that I wanted to include, and again, a lot of the artists I had worked with before because that allows for a more in-depth, um, interview. Um, so, so that was also something that, um, you know, was important. Um, certain artists that I wanted to include were not, you know, on the final sort of wish list of artists. Certain artists, one or two artists actually said no, um, that they didn't want to participate. Um, and yeah, we had people that were questioning, you know, why we didn't include so-and-so, for example, um, who's, you know, who they felt were an obvious choice. Um, but we did want to include this range of artists and artists that were not so mainstream as well. 
Um, so on the one hand, it's a very focused selection, but on the other hand, it's also you know around, as you say, artists that we have relationships with, that we can that we work well with. I mean, that's very much part of curating as well, um, is the synergies that you have and the, the great conversations that you can have with with um, with different practitioners. So. So it's a mixture of, you know, being very kind of careful and nervous and, you know, making sure we represent everyone as best as we can. And then also including, um, including artists that we've got great existing relationships with. And then some new voices that people might not have heard of, but that deserve, you know, a sort of introduction in, in this type of project, which allows them to speak for themselves rather than canonizing them too early on in their practices. Um, so hence this more conversational tone um, actually my question was kind of linked to that because I was wondering why you didn't include the famous artists like Ronald Ventura and you know similar artists like that who are very successful in the auction market um, so you kind of answered that um, so I just want to ask a slightly different question which is um, you know you've been in the Malaysian art scene for quite a while before going to the Philippines um, what is your insight on the differences between the two scenes in Philippines and in Malaysia? Um, yeah, I, you know, I've been kind of thinking about this, the sort of differences and similarities across the region, having had the privilege of sort of working in various places in Southeast Asia. I mean, Malaysia, KL is, of course, I mean, population-wise, just so much smaller than, than um, Metro Manila. Um, and the density, you know, KL's kind of, um, what's the word, fragmented by highways and um, has, um, doesn't have that sort of level of um, uh, urban, you know, there's like, here where we are right now is quite dense, but I mean in Manila you have sort of five or six different areas in the metropolitan that are, you know, like this area where we're in right now. So it's, Manila's far more dense, number one. Um, there are more art schools. I mean, it's a numbers game, right? So there's, because it's a bigger population, there's more art schools. Um, there's more galleries. There's more sort of spaces and places for, for galleries. There's more, um, there's more pockets or locations where artists can kind of function. I mean, obviously, it's more homogenous. Um, you're either... Uh, um, I mean, it's not as sort of divided in terms of being um, of a particular race or a particular religion. I mean, for the most part, everyone's sort of Tagalog speaking from UP or UST or Ateneo. Um, and I mean, there's class issues for sure, but it's a, a little bit more homogenous, I would say. I mean, there's diversity in terms of the styles and the different subjects that, that people are, are looking at. Um, but in terms, of, in terms of that, it's a little bit more homogenous in Metro Manila. Um, it, it's just, I think there are a lot more challenges as well. I mean, when you're going to an opening and suddenly the road is flooded and you can't get, get, get past, you know, and artists are traveling on jeepneys rather than in a car, um, you know, or their studio gets flooded, you know, these kinds of natural disasters <laughs> that happen quite on a regular basis that people have to somehow deal with and they don't have a support structure to kind of, you know, help them get back on their, their feet. Um, so it's a lot, it's a lot more in, intense, I suppose, in terms of those very real human challenges. Um, there's no government support. There's, um, there is no, um, you know, sort of regular funding streams apart from things that come from the private, private sector or from international um, organizations. So it's, I guess it's bigger. It's um, more challenging in a way. Um, and there's, I would say there's, you know, more diversity in terms of what artists are actually producing, I suppose. But it's really just a numbers game, I think, more than anything else. And very Catholic. <laughs> Extremely, extremely Catholic. I mean, religion um, is a huge. So, I mean, very much similar to here, um, but it's just a different, you know, a different sort of majority. Um, but yes, the, the sort of can be quite um, tradition. In many ways, can be very traditional, and many ways, extremely progressive. So, it's these contradictions, I suppose. Is a, that's the best way to describe it. They're, they're these kinds of very, you know, dramatic contradictions in in Metro Manila. 
If I could follow up on your question as well, one of the things that's, of course, very interesting is, um, on the one hand, you're talking about uh, a city and its sort of own dynamics, but increasingly cities are always connectors to other cities or to uh, an international scene. So uh, one of the things that's, of course, happened in the last 20 years, but you know, uh, has been intensifying, is the internationalization of all the major cities in, in Southeast Asia. So, you know, KL is no longer just a Malaysian city, it's a regional and international city. So it's interesting to think about the dynamics also of the Manila scene vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a kind of global or regional art scene and, and Malaysia as well. So there's some interesting differences uh, there as well because the Manila history with Europe is very, very much deeper uh, as, a, uh, as an art scene, not, not a, you know, like a political history. So, you know, since the 19th century, uh, Filipinos going and studying in Europe and coming back and becoming important artists. So they have a very interesting uh, relationship mm. with uh, you know, world art history. Um, and those sort of differences and, uh, and points of similarities I think are also uh, very dynamic. Uh, of course, you know, the relationship between uh, the Philippines and the United States as opposed, and, and Spain, of course, and then uh, in Malaysia it would be with uh, the British uh, empire and, and so forth. So those are, I think, some other kind of coordinates to, to think about uh, that difference. Um, other questions or comments? Yes, please. Um, hi. Took a look at the book. It's a beautiful book. Um, I was just wondering, during the development and production of the book, did you all discuss or think about the audience who was going to be able to purchase the book? Yeah. Um, because I took a, a look at the price point as well, and I think it gets priced out uh, for quite a lot of people, especially in Manila as well. Um, also considering you've got a lot of outsider type artists in the book. So I'd just like to hear your thoughts on, on basically how you're going to align the book and the audience. Yeah. Um, so the um, challenge of doing a book like this was that we wanted to do something really special. Um, and special unfortunately is expensive. <laughs> so a pop-up and you know the different types of specs that you see in the book um, and also printing in the Philippines as opposed to printing not sorry printing in you know that part of the region is more costly and we weren't sure what type of response a book like this would have so we only printed a thousand copies so a thousand copies also comes out at you know more expensive in terms of the cost per unit um, and we wanted to kind of create this sort of special, I suppose, first collector's edition book um, to um, have this, you know, sort of, not one-off, but, you know, this kind of limited edition version of this book. Um, and books that have been coming out in Metro Manila at the moment are all around this particular price point. Um, now, we're very aware that that definitely outprices students, um, art enthusiasts that, you know, are not um, ready to spend that type of money on a book like this. Um, so, ways that we are trying to think through for the sort of next stage of this book would be to produce um, a version of this book on an online platform, for example. Um, or to produce a second edition that doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of the first edition so that it is more um, accessible to people who, who don't want to spend that, that type of money. Um, but for sure, I mean, that is, um, you know, that is one of the, th that's something that kind of stops a couple of people from, from purchasing the book is, is the cost. Um, but we weren't, you know, it's really an experiment to see whether people want a book like this um, and whether we should do more books, um, and you know how the scene sort of embraces this type of this type of project. So so far so good. Um, you also mentioned that uh, what you're preoccupied with right now is helping. I mean, working with uh, institutions in Metro Manila to acquire copies. So having them in libraries or universities is a very important sort of uh, dissemination. So, so we, we have um, a mixture of uh, books that we've donated to museums, um, gallery spaces, curators, um, and other influencers in, in the scene, as well as approaching libraries and other institutions who have a budget to buy, to buy these types of books. So, it, so we are not just 
um, limiting ourselves to collectors, but also trying to plant the book in, in various places, um, both in the Philippines regionally and internationally, so that people can, um, can learn more about contemporary Filipino art. I mean, it is really a labor of love. I mean, this is not a... This is not something that is, you know, a, a sort of a financial project. It really is about making a contribution, you know, to, to the scene um, through this sort of special, fun, crazy book, basically. So it's a, it was a very steep learning curve, and there are certain things that we probably do a little bit differently the second time around. Um, but, um, but, you know, I think it's important to have books in the world, really, and books that tell our stories. Um, and stories of artists and artworks and movements and politics and social, you know, social happenings. So, on to the next one. <laughs> More questions or comments? Have you thought about doing um, other cities in the Philippines? Like Baguio, for instance. We've thought of um, we've thought of doing a, a sort of like a yeah province um, focused project. Um, it's just I suppose the logistics of that. I mean, because it's important to sort of go to all of these places, um, and maybe that that would also. I would assume mean bringing in a team of people who are from these places and have these histories, so that they can um, connect with artists um, to tell, you know, to tell their stories. And then we have, then we have to deal with dialects and, um, you know, those, those types of things as yeah. well. I mean, but it would be great to do, you know, a book that focused on what's happening in, I, I don't know, Cebu or Bohol or um, Iloilo or, you know, Baguio, for example. I mean, there's lots going on outside of Metro Manila. I think that's you know, important to state in this kind of talk is that the, the art scene is not just, you know, the capital region, but there's a lot of different things going on all over the Philippines. And I think that's something that um, the larger art world is also trying to recognize mm -hmm. that when they're looking at Southeast Asia, they're only, they're not just looking at the, the capital cities. Yeah. Uh, and I know, for instance, the Singapore Biennale, not the most recent one, but the 2013, yeah. Um, w which had a shift to being much more Southeast Asian focused rather than international as their previous biennales had been. When they worked with the Philippines, for instance, the Singapore curator, um, they were quite deliberate in not just having it as uh, Manila-centric, mm -hmm. but uh, they, they worked with other um, areas in the Philippines. Well, I'm going to almost sound like an auctioner, you know, going once, twice. Any more questions? Well, of course, you know, Eva's not going to bolt right out the door right now, but so you can, you know, approach her one-on-one. Um, -on -one. But thank you all very much on behalf of uh, Ilham, Rahel, uh, and Eva, of course. Thank you for coming to the, the, the launch. And uh, please make sure that you're on the mailing list of Ilham. Are there any other announcements that I need to... Yeah. Oh, yes. So um, we also have an online platform for sales of the book. Uh, so if, um, if there are no more copies available at some point in time when you come to get your copy, you can go to um, www.artbooks.ph, um, which is a local bookstore um, on Philippine art and culture, and they are facilitating all of our international, international sales. Um, so wherever you are, your friends or family, if they want to buy, they can, they can visit um, Art Books and get the book um, online. Yes, uh, please have a look at the book itself, um, mm. you know, out at the reception desk. And thank you once again for coming and um, have a good day. Thank, thank you. you thank you, everyone.